The relationship between Driver and Irene in this movie is a love story pared down to its bare essentials. It's free of all the fluff that gets in the way of other Hollywood movies. Driver sees her and there's a connection and they begin to spend some time together. One floor. Four, thanks. He moves into the building that she lives in, and we imagine by that point that her husband, Standard, had been in prison for about six months, and not really for doing anything particularly terrible, just, you know, he got caught up in some one bad thing, and he's a good guy. So about six months after he goes away, this new guy moves into the building, and they sort of have those things where you see each other and you kind of make eye contact, and it has a bit of an impact on you, but you kind of dismiss it. And Action Ryan. I think she's trying to sort of keep focused on the fact that she's, you know, this is her family and her car breaks down and he offers to help. And so from then on, it's sort of this relationship forms. You want a glass of water? Okay. I love the fact that there was something sort of, they want to so badly, and it, but it, it's so repressed from both of them and can't behave how they want to behave. That's been to his father. Where is he? He's in prison. Oh. And that it's all subtext and how they really feel is through through the way that they look at each other or things like that or what they don't say is so much more important than what they do say. What do you do? I drive. I like for movies. Oh. You mean all the car chases and stuff? Yeah. Is that dangerous? The relationship with Irene started off with with this place of resistance. He senses, I think, that this could take him out of his comfort zone and this could be a threat to the box he's created around himself. Hey, do you want to see something? Yeah. The initial scenes, it was about him resisting and avoiding her, and she almost makes him human for, for a very brief moment in, in you know, the course of our story, which is that through her and through the relationship with Benicio, there is a, a normality. Driver and Irene fall in love, but it's not in the sort of conventional sense. There's nothing ever sort of physical and nothing's ever said and nothing's ever done. I mean, they're both, like, respectful, but there's sort of an undeniable thing that's happened. And it's completely sort of innocent and really impure, but, you know, she has fallen in love with somebody else. That was good. He had a good time. And when she finds out standards, getting out of prison early, you know, it's a kind of blow because she had this time with, with Driver on her own and now she doesn't have it. But at the same time, the father of her child is coming back and she should be happy. So I want to make a toast to that lady right there. I love you, Rini. Nicholas Winding Refn, the director, has always described it as a fairy tale. It's the knight sees a damsel in distress. Sometimes that happens in the world. But as happens in fairy tales, the evil prince comes home. Sorry about the noise. I was going to call the cops. I wish you would. And now, what, what are you going to do? Which creates a dilemma for everybody. Because, you know, the prince wants his princess, but she's also in trouble. What does Driver do? Irene is torn between two men, and all of a sudden, you have the makings of great drama. This guy's been telling me a lot about you. Says you've been uh, coming around and helping out a lot. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Driver and Arena have already uh, started getting close, and so he kind of comes in and puts a stop to that. Well, my name is Standard Gabriel. And what did you say? I said, where's the deluxe version? <laughs> <laughs> the problem is that he's got a lot of baggage that he's accumulated while in prison. All this madness ensues uh, because of that. It's kind of what sets the whole plot in motion. <laughs> Can I talk to you for a minute? The thing that surprises her and hurts her the most, really, is the driver was involved. And sort of the biggest pain is that for the two days after it happens, or the day and a half after it happens, she can't find him. And she's so used to being able to just go to him for everything. You still got the money. You could take Benicio. And so when he comes clean and, and he offers her the money and says that he was involved, it's like he's been ripped out of her world. He can't, he's not the sort of knight in shining armor or the, you know, the hero or the perfect man that she thought he was. And, you know, he's, he's complicit and, and it's tainted and everything that they had, which she thought was so sort of pure, is just destroyed. Action! Ah, uh, that's what we need. 
ray of sunshine on a rainy day. <laughs> hey, kid, give us a hand here for a second. Ryan's sort of, he has this, like, incredible nobility. He judges everything correctly, and there's, like, a stillness to what he does, and so you feel really calm, like, around him. I think that's the effect that he has on Irene, and that's what Ryan sort of instills in it. You feel just really serene, and he makes you feel really happy. He's sort of got this, at least around her, kind of inner peace, and so that's really appealing. I think that's why they, you know, we, we always joke because we fall into these like really long, we cut out all the dialogue and just stare at each other, but that's sort of how, what their relationship is. It's more about sort of stopping for a minute. But I just want you to know, getting to be around you and Benicio was the best thing that ever happened to me. It's, it's just fun to write. The subtext is, is telling you the story rather than what they're telling you. And, and, and this was one of those stories that really gave you that possibility and it's, I think the idea of you know being able to write a silent movie as close to a silent movie as you can is, is actually great fun.